So I was at the lake yesterday and uh, put my boat into gear and it would go forward fine. And then I went to go back reverse. I went forward again. So I knew that the throttle or the shifter cable was broke or something is wrong in here. And uh, so back here is the cable. So at the lake, I had to pull on the cable or push on the cable to make it go into forward gear, reverse gear. So I know that this is damaged. So I did a video a couple years ago about uh, lubricating the cable and the cable's pretty free. I'll probably end up replacing it anyway, but I'm gonna take this panel out and then see what is wrong with this shifter. I don't wanna to have to buy a shifter because they're like between three and $400, but uh, I'm gonna pull this out and see what's broke on it. So taking this side panel off on the four winds, this is a 1996 190 Horizon, but they should all be about the same. You're gonna have a bolt here. You're gonna have a nut on the other side of that. It's gonna be a 3 8 or a 10. Another one here, another one here, and one here. And then down in here, you're gonna have a Phillips head down there and then one down further. So two Phillips head and four nuts, and you can pull this panel off. So before you take your panel off, make sure you disconnect the two yellow with red wires. And then uh, this black cable here, they go up in here on mine. The black cable goes to this one. So just take that one off, unplug it. And then the, the two yellow ones have bullet connectors. It doesn't matter which one they go in. It's just a switch for the neutral and that goes into there. So unplug those first and then you can remove this panel. So here is the cause of why my boat stayed in, in forward gear and I couldn't go reverse. This right here is broken, this holder to hold the cable. So that's why when I shifted it, it wouldn't, it, the whole cable moves. It doesn't hold it in place. So if I, when I held the cable and went like that, I could get into gear. So if you're stuck out on the lake and you can only go forward or you can only go reverse, grab this cable, try to hold it in place, and then shift it. It should shift, okay? To take this holder off, you're going to need a 3 8 or a 10 millimeter wrench and then a Phillips head. I'll take that off. And then we're going to take this out and see what's actually broke with it. Ah, uh, so this piece just broke in half. So what I'll end up doing is buying a new cable since these are molded in on the cables. So now I got to figure out what size cable I have. So the throttle cable is straightforward. It goes over to the engine throttle. The shifter cable on this boat goes into this tube here. Oops, sorry, in the video. So it goes into this tube to make it easier to fish through. Remove your cover by removing the three 10 millimeter bolts. Use a 10 millimeter ratchet wrench to remove this cable retainer. Remove the cable retainer. That should be free. Next, we have to uh, remove the cotter pin and the nut. Remove the nut. Remove the cotter pin and the washer. And then remove that. You'll have to unscrew this from it. But that's the end of the cable. So, unscrew this. This is just for my own peace of mind. Uh, put the nut back on, put a tie string to it, and pull the tie string through. So just in case you have a problem pulling the other cable back, you can use this pull string and pull it back. So I'm gonna pull it up through the boat now. So this is where the cable is gonna come through. It's gonna be hard to pull it first, but once you get it going, I think it comes out pretty good. Uh, let's see. Yep. Yep, that's 
hanging up on something, so. Don't be afraid to jerk it once or twice to get it on through. Uh, it just caught on one of these pieces here or the nut. I don't know which one, but uh, it came right through then. Now I can get an accurate measurement of the cable length. And that comes out to about 14 feet. This is for a 19 foot boat. I will try to get a better uh, picture of the number here, but this is what labeling it has. And it does have a 14 on the end, so it is a 14 foot. The throttle cable is a CC21413, so it's a 13 foot made by Teleflex. So I ordered both of these cables. Well, I received both of my cables, finally. They were about $80 each. Here is the 13-foot uh, cable. So you're going to use this number, and then the last two digits are going to be the length of the cable that you need. And this one was for the throttle, and this one was for the gear shift. The 14-footer is the one that broke, but I'm replacing both. But these are the part numbers for the 19-foot four winds. Here's the old cable on the left and the new cable on the right. Everything matches up correctly. <clears throat> what I'll do is uh, take these rubber grommets off, take the nut off, and I'll tie the pull string around this little notch right here and pull it through. So I got my tie string tied to that notch right there to pull with, and right here I'm going to put some tape around the string so it guides it in there straight. So I'm going to try to do this one person. I've got the string coming out the uh, the back of the transom there. And then I'm going to start feeding this through. But it may take two people to do this. And push that through. Might be hard with that knot that I got on there. Okay, now pull this string as I push it, and hopefully it'll go through. I need to straighten this up as best as possible because I don't want to bend that shaft. I think it'll be easier to work. Well, no, it went on through. Okay, pulling this as I'm pushing. It feels like it went through. I'll go check it out. So the cable came through easier than I thought. It, uh, I made it all the way here. Now I just got to get it on through. And, or I need to take the uh, string off. That's what I need to do. So the easiest thing to do is push it back in a little bit till you see the uh, string hanging out the back here. Use some side snips and cut the, cut the rope uh, string off. And then you can pull it out easier. There we go. Once you get that knot cut off of there, you can pull this on through and take the tape off. Now that I got it pulled back through, I can put these grommets back on. This one's just gonna go all the way over this. That. And this one's going to go over the end and make sure it moves freely. I'm going to push it back in and clamp it down back here. Push your cable back till you see the notch show right there, and then put your uh, 
clamp there and then we're going to put this bolt back in right here now to put this bolt back in the easiest thing to do is have a ratchet wrench like this a 10 millimeter ratchet wrench if you don't have this it'll just take a little while to use a regular wrench but we'll put this back in and then finish tightening it with a regular ratchet due to this lip We'll go ahead and screw this back on, but we'll do this adjustment later after we put the other end of the cable on. And don't don't lose this lock nut, so make sure you put that on real quick, just so you don't lose it. When fishing this cable through the rest of the boat, be very careful. Very careful with the bending radius because when you get it down to this point where you're pushing it through here, there's only a I think it said four to five inch bending radius. So we have to be careful right here fishing it through. Now I'm back to the point where the cable this is where the cable broke. We're gonna reattach it. So I need a Phillips head and something to hold this nut on the bottom side. Just make a note of where this is uh, attached like that. All right, now we'll take this cable, put it through there it through there like that make sure that's in the same spot and you're going back in the same same hole I'm working kind of at an angle here so it's a little difficult I'll get the screw started and then something to hold it in place while I tighten it down it'd be better with a socket but I just had this handy right here so I'm using this needle nose tight now we'll move on to connecting the shifter pull that cotter pin back out push this through put that back through put this cotter pin back in bend that around all right that cotter pin is in checking for that check for this and then I'll move on to the other cable. So for the other cable, I removed the cotter pin. I'll push this uh, this pin out. Now we're going to remove this. Make a note of how this was connected in here. This one was on the front side, so I'm just going to lay this down right back down on there in the hole. So I know where it went and pull this out. Get the new cable now. Okay, I got the new cable. Got this plastic piece on there. Let the screw go through. This is a 10 millimeter, by the way. I'm able to use this wrench on this one. Let's clamp down. Now we can connect this. And then put the cotter pin back in. Now that I got both cables done on this end, uh, this thing is ready to go back. I'm not gonna, uh, to keep this video short, I'm not gonna show putting it back in. Uh, just go back and look earlier in the video where I took it off. It's just these four bolts here holding it on and two screws in the back. Now, if you guys are wondering why I had this spring here, well, that was before I did that other video on lubricating the, vi the uh, cables. I put this on here to help the idle come down on the boat. And uh, I can now remove this because I have brand new cables. 
All right, that's back in place. Now we can move on to the motor. First thing to do on the engine is uh, remove the four bolts for this cover and just remove that cover out of the way. And you can see down in here a lot easier. When you take this uh, cable holder off, it goes in here. The cable's gonna be going like this in there. When you take this off, uh, use a 7 16 to a 7 16 um, If you notice the cable's bent right there, and when I bring the new cable in, it wants to bend right there too. And it looks like you could actually go with a 14 footer on this one and leave the slack down in the back of the boat back there. Um, so it won't bend as bad. But the 13 foot is kind of tight. I don't know why they did it that way. This is gonna be a little more difficult to show because it with the camera, uh, it's in a tight corner. So, um, have to remove this nut right here and then back there the cotter pin it's uh well it's hard to show cotter pin you have to remove just like the other end uh and then this is where we're gonna pay attention on the threads of how many threads we're gonna measure from the end um let's see i might be able to see it easier if i remove the spark arrestor so on the throttle control, they did not use a cotter pin. They have a, a nut right here they'll have to remove. So I'm gonna remove that off camera. So old cable versus new cable. I moved the nut so it's in, I uh, matched up these slots here first. And then I moved the nut to match the other nut. And then I'll take the end off and put it on the other cable. What I did was unscrew this from the old cable and I'm going to screw it onto the new cable. Just down to where the nut is. What I want to do is make sure the nuts are the same. Um, when this is lined up here. And that looks about right. So I'll probably lock it down right there and then put this back together. So I'm locking this down with a, a number eight wrench. So now that this is ready, I'll slide this back up on the post and put the nut back on, tighten it down. This one here is actually a three eighths. It's not a 10, it's a three eighths. 10 is too sloppy. So I rerouted the cable under it was over the top of these here i'll ride it underneath that so it won't bend as bad and now we're going to put this piece back on okay once you get the slot lined up it'll go in that's kind of a pain it's kind of a, a tight area here and i'm sweating like a pig here it's so hot And now tighten these back up with a 7 16 on the bottom, 7 16 on top. Now after you got both ends done, remove the old cables, get rid of those, throw them away, and route these cables up behind here, and tie wrap them up, put everything back together. We'll turn it on, do some adjustments on it maybe. Hopefully I don't have to do any adjustments and uh, it'll be good to go. To get your shifter adjusted correctly, uh, this is a neutral position. This is, uh, well, you know, I don't know. It's either reverse or forward, I don't remember. And then that's the other position. But put this in the neutral here and then unscrew this until it lines up with your actuator there. And then you can put your washer and cotter pin in. This one lines up and it's ready to go. And then after that, after you get it lined up, then tighten this nut down to hold it in place. Now 
now that my shaky hands got the uh, cotter pin back in, nut tightened down, we can buckle it back up and do a test. And if you're wondering if you could put a monster rack on your boat, on your four winds boat, you can. You just have to reinforce the fiberglass here and back here on both sides. Use some plywood and fiberglass. So this project wasn't too hard. It took two or three hours probably total. Maybe not even that long, but uh, the shifter shifts very easy now. So in my old video where I lubricated the cables, Sure, it freed it up a lot, but oh man, this is way, way better. This is a lot smoother. So if you're going down the lake and you go forward and your boat goes backwards or you go reverse and it goes backwards or if you go uh, reverse and it goes forward, you know that your cable, your shifting cable is probably broke. It's probably going to be these plastic pieces. So hopefully this uh, video will help somebody make it easy for you to change these control cables out and uh, like the video. Thanks.